Ladies and gents, hello and welcome back to another video. This is by popular demand. I've seen a lot of people struggling with this, so I decided to make a quick tutorial on how to jailbreak your iOS 9 device. Now, I know this works on the iPhone 4S, iPod Touch 5th Gen, and I think that's all I've tried it on. Uh, these are the A5 devices. I think this also works on the iPad 2nd Gen and the iPad 3rd Gen because iOS 9 is the last version for those devices. Today we have a fifth gen iPod Touch. I did a complete restore with iTunes. So this thing is factory. I just went through the setup. You guys can see there, iOS 9.3.5 is the one we've got here. So what do we need to do this? Obviously you need the iPod. You're gonna need a cable to plug into your computer. I'm using a lightning to USB-C cable here and I have a Apple Silicon MacBook. I believe this works on basically any MacBook model. I do not know about Windows and I do not know about Linux. Okay, what else do we need? We're gonna need an application called Sideloadly. And let me go ahead and adjust the camera so you guys can see my screen a little better. All right, so it's gonna be this website here and you're gonna to go to the download tab and it looks like it is Windows supported. So if you have Windows, you can try that out. I don't have any experience with that, but you're gonna download the Mac OS version. It's gonna go into downloads and you're gonna open it and install it. What else are you gonna need? You're gonna need the Phoenix jailbreak IPA file. Now I know there are a few different kinds of jailbreaks, but I've had the most success and consistency with Phoenix. So we're gonna to go to this website here and we will download it there. Once you have both of those things, you're gonna to wanna to open side loadly. So if you haven't installed that already, make sure you do. I'll go ahead and quit out of it because I did have it open there. And uh, it'll be in your applications folder. If it's not there, drag it in and open it up. So what you want for this is you need an Apple ID. This can be any Apple ID. It can be your personal one, although I don't really recommend that. It can also just be a burner ID that you've made. I believe it has to be at least 18 years old. So whenever you're making that, make sure your birthday is going to set you up to be older than 18 years old. Otherwise, I don't think this works. Now, I did have a problem before where this was not working. It would not sign the IPA file onto the device. That's because you have to be signed in with that same Apple ID on your MacBook. So make sure that the Apple ID you use for this is also the one you're signed in on inside of system settings on your MacBook. We can go ahead and connect the iPod or iPad or iPhone or whatever you're using to the computer. So we'll go ahead and plug it in there and I will get it connected. Once you plug it in, it's probably gonna prompt you to trust the device uh, or trust the computer from the device and you'll wanna do that. If you get the accessory not supported, that shouldn't be a problem. If you have Apple Silicon Mac, you may have to allow the device to connect, but you guys should be familiar with that. Okay, once we are connected here from this drop down menu, we're gonna select the iPod Touch or the iPhone or whatever your device is. And let me zoom in here so you guys can see. And now we wanna find the Phoenix jailbreak. So I put it on the desktop here. It's the IPA file. We're gonna drag it over here just like that. You should see that image populate there on the left. Now we should be ready to go. Um, my Apple ID is in here currently. If yours is not, you'll have to type it in. And I think it requires your password as well. And you may have to do two-factor authentication. So this will take you a little bit longer to get set up the first time, but after you've done it, it should be pretty easy after that. Once you're all set, you've got the IPA file here. You've got the iPod plugged in and your Apple ID is all set and ready to go. Then we're gonna go ahead and click start. Now in a perfect world, this program is gonna sign that IPA file and add it to our device. This takes anywhere from like a minute to five minutes, probably depending on the speed of your computer. I've got obviously a pretty powerful machine here, so this does not take too much time. Okay, and once the program says that it's done, you should see it over here on the iPod. Now, if you try to click on it, it is not gonna work. It's from an untrusted developer. That developer is gonna be yourself, so it's gonna have your own Apple ID there. So you head into settings, general, and scroll down until you get device management and then you'll click it and you'll click trust. After that, you should be able to go back into the Phoenix application and it should open and we're gonna click prepare for jailbreak. We're gonna accept the terms and conditions. We're gonna dismiss this and we're gonna click proceed with jailbreak down there at the bottom. Then we'll click begin installation and we'll use the provided offsets. Now, if you're lucky, this process will work on the first time. If you're not lucky, then it could take anywhere from like two to 20 times. Sometimes this application is rather finicky and it takes several attempts over and over again for it to jailbreak the iPod Touch. 
With that said, we'll see what happens here. I'll go ahead and speed up the video. The iPod will reboot itself maybe a couple times. You'll know it's successful once you see the Cydia application on the home screen. With that said, we are finished with the MacBook. We just needed that to get the Phoenix application onto the iPod or iPod or iPad or whatever you're using. All right, here we are. We'll go ahead and slide to unlock. Will we see Cydia? And we do. Let's click on that and see if it opens. If you don't see Cydia there, go back into the Phoenix application, run through those steps again, and do that over and over again until you see Cydia on the home screen and until it actually opens. If you get Cydia and you press it and it just crashes, go back into Phoenix and follow the steps again. They may look a little bit different, but you should be able to figure it out. Once you're in Cydia, you can basically do what you want. Your iPod or iPad or whatever you're using is now jailbroken on iOS 9. Keep in mind, this is a tether to jailbreak. That means if the iPod dies or you turn it off and back on, you're gonna have to run that jailbreak once again. Cydia will stay on there, but if you try to open it after a restart, it will just crash, it will not work. If you want an untethered jailbreak, then you can downgrade this to iOS 8, and then that will be an untethered jailbreak, and performance will probably be a little bit better because iOS 9 on A5 devices is not ideal. All right, there you guys have it. That's been a quick guide on how to jailbreak iOS 9 on Apple A5 devices. Hope you found it helpful. If you run into any problems or have any comments or suggestions for other people, leave that in the comments down below and I will do my best to answer them or provide any advice as possible. I'll also leave the two links we used in the video down below as well so you can find them easily. Thank you guys so much for watching and as always, I look forward to seeing you in another one of my videos.